a very helpful question came up from a student, which was about the what we mean when we talk about illusionism and what we mean when we talk about idealization. This is a hugely important question because these terms come up again and again. So many ideas are built around them. Let's start with illusionism. So looking at a dictionary definition online, the Oxford Dictionary Online, we get the definition the, that illusionism is the principle or technique by which artistic representations are made to resemble real objects or to give an appearance of space by the use of perspective. So going back to Clara Peter's painting, Still Life with Fruit and Flowers, this is an excellent example of illusionism. This, there is no table. There are no silver or pewter dishes or baskets or fruit. It is actually a flat surface, a wooden panel. But the artist, Clara Peters, knows and uses the, the techniques of painting that trick the eye by creating forms that have light and dark this seems to pop forward the light on this surface seems to push the form forward the dark seems to recede back she uses light and shadow she uses color she uses um, a very careful drawing in the way things are laid out so that the circular form is an ellipsis so that we believe that there is a kind of a dish laying on the table Sculpture can also be illusionistic, as in this artwork by Michelangelo, the Pietà, where he has chiseled the stone in such a way that it feels like flesh, muscles, bones, the anatomy is defined, the way he has modeled in three-dimensional form the, the fabric's folds, we have an illusion that that is actually cloth, but it's not, it's stone. So illusionism in painting or sculpture is a kind of magic trick in which we are convinced that this is a body, even though we know better, we know it's stone. That's the game that artists play. But not all artists are interested in illusionism. Mark Rothko here is not representing objects in the real world in a way that plays with or fools us that we're looking at reality. He's laying paint on the surface. Now, it's true that there is a little bit of a feeling, we could almost call it a hint of illusion in the way the blurred feathery boundaries make it feel as if this is floating in front of the orange, but he's certainly not illusionistic in the way that Clara Peters is. Martha Knowles and Henrietta Thomas are not interested in illusionism at all. They want pattern. They want the dynamic interplay of color and pattern to be the focus and the purpose of the artwork. They're not trying to represent real objects. If you go to the DVC homepage, you'll be reminded that we are surrounded by illusionistic images, along with, this is not illusionistic, it's a beautiful graphic to celebrate being in solidarity with Black Lives Matter, but here's a photograph of a student. It's incredibly illusionistic. Here's a student, you feel like you would recognize him if you saw him on the street because photographs are these impeccable illusions that we have created. Western culture had been, has been working on a heightened illusionism in art since the 1400s. This Heian period illustration of Lady Murasaki's tale of Genji is purposely not very illusionistic. There's a little bit of illusionism. We can see this as the rolling shade that can roll down over the window. We can see these as figures, but the faces are what is called stylized. They're referred to in traditional Japanese culture as a hook for a nose, a line for an eye. Very simplified. This is purposeful. It serves an expressive purpose that relates to the novel and its tale of secrets, betrayals, of people hiding behind masks. So idealization, let's be precise about this term. It is the action of regarding or representing something as perfect or better than reality. So Raphael's figures are very idealized because everyone's sort of soft and plump and graceful. Everyone has a neat little hairstyle. 
Interestingly, we could say that the figures here are not very illusionistic, but they are rather idealized. They have an ideal of kind of graceful swaying motions, which expresses the fact that they're court figures. They are figures who live in the court of the emperor of Japan. I want to show you that illu illusionistic images can be non-idealized. So I was going to show, I googled bad driver's license photos because the internet is obnoxious, right? But none of, all of these people look very nice to me. I don't really feel like anyone's got a, a driver's license photo as bad as mine. So imagine the worst driver's license photo you can imagine. The photograph itself is illusionistic. You can identify the person from the photo, but if it's a bad photograph, it is not idealizing your appearance. So trawling the dregs of the internet again, I'm showing you what pops up for model photography, right? So this woman is, of course, very beautiful on her own right, but in this photograph, she's also being idealized in that the pose is carefully chosen, right? She's put on her makeup to enhance her beauty. She's holding her hair in just the right way to create a certain effect. It's kind of the most perfect moment of her self-representation. And so that's an idealization of a highly illusionistic image because this is such a detailed image, the photograph, that we can see the details of her nails, of her hair, of everything, which is what photography does best.